people definitely have an emotional response when it comes to music. Sometimes being incredibly happy and elated, sometimes being moved to tears, sad and happy. What does music actually do to your brain? It can be more complicated than you might think at the surface. Music is deceptively, you would think it was simple, but it's actually a much more complicated thing. I would say so. I yeah. mean, when you look, you know, uh, being a musician myself, when you look at music, it's, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it could be as complicated as like a mathematical problem. I know that sounds mm -hmm. crazy, but when you're considering like rhythm and melody and, and, uh, you know, the, Oh my goodness! Now my now my brain. See, I'm I'm still thinking about sandwiches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you see the sandwich video, <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me get it back. Uh, when when you think about melody and and note structure and 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 rhythm and uh, the structure of the song, like verse, chord, you know, it's it's a complicated process. And with music, there's so many varieties and so many different genres and so many different um, things. Like you can you can be listening to a song and then a different song comes on and it, it puts you in a completely different mood or gives you a completely different rhythmic feeling. I, I, words are hard. Um, well, sp specifically neuroscientists who study music mm. have found that there is uh, much like you might feel during sex or drug use or exercise, a dopamine release happens in the brain when you hear specific parts of songs um, that mean something to you. Mm. So uh, a dopa according to Susan Rogers, PhD, she is the director of the Berkeley Music Perception and Cognition Laboratory in Boston and also Prince's former sound engineer, uh, dopamine oh. release happens as a function of expectation. In music, we're constantly going back and forth between tension and release. Mm -hmm. That sounds like sex. Uh, we'll build up tension until we have that breakdown, and that feels great. So maybe in crescendos of certain songs, mm -hmm. uh, maybe when the the vocalist hits an incredibly hard note, or like, and uh, you're waiting for it to happen, or like the song's building and building, and then goes into a, like a key change and when or that a modulation, beat yeah. drops. Oh yeah, drop the uh, first. <laughs> um, so it is a matter of um, anticipation. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I know a lot of people get extremely angry when they hear Nickelback, so it's just like the same thing, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, if, no. if it insults <laughs> your sensibilities so much, maybe. Uh, I know. Well, like, and it's always it's also a funny thing how like some people, um, you know, love hip hop. Some people love country. Some people I mean, like. So many people have different tastes in music, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it could be anything from their upbringing to what they you know grew up listening to. Um, that's actually extremely accurate, mm -hmm. um, according to Dr. Rogers. Uh, the artists you listen to in adolescence uh, is when at a time when you're uh, still neurologically developing. Your brains are kind of determining mm -hmm. what you like, what you don't like, who you are at a lot of levels. Um, it's ex it's especially powerful whatever mm. music you're listening to then so yeah i'll put on like a 90s like 80s 90s remix like to kind of get myself back when i was like a kid yeah. like oh yeah listening to the goo goo dolls or something crazy like that i was a weird kid and i grew up listening to the soundtrack of river dance so i don't know if I, this particularly pertains to me <laughs> i don't know like i was like that weird kid like you know picturing leprechauns dancing around my room i like, this only is listened great. to like soundtracks and show tunes when i was a teenager yep a show tunes for so. sure Musical oh, theater. Maybe nerd. that says something. I was in musical theater. Yeah. So and oh, I didn't see, sing we should, though. We should so, sing about no, this I can't story. Sing. Oh. I they gave me I was a speaking part and they gave me a microphone, like one of those ones that pop stars have mm -hmm. that comes out of your ear. Yeah. And like I would lip sync whenever it was like a group singing. Cause That's I, adorable. I, I, <laughs> I'm not good. I shouldn't get the focus, so I didn't do that. Oh. Um but as Dr. Rogers says, um when you're figuring things out as a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be cathartic to listen to music, um, which is why it explains a lot of pop punk and emo popularity at certain times mm -hmm. of people's lives, which is what they're still trying to figure out how to work things out. And music can kind of be a coach in a way to help you respond to certain problems like, oh, you should have said that to that guy. You should do this if someone does that to you. You know, this oh, is how yes. you fix your sadness. You should or, drop it like it's hot when you're holding the yes, hot plate. Yes. When the pigs that try how, to get is that at you, what the song's about? that's what you should do. Because that's what I got. From um, it. <laughs> but it's just it's something like you can relate to music like an old friend in that way, like I, someone who I think helped you during a harder accurate. time or a time when you didn't have the tools mm -hmm. to help you. Um, interestingly enough, according to uh, Dr. Rogers, 
different music appeals to different people. Mm -hmm. For example, she says risk takers tend to like more avant-garde music, mm -hmm. while those who don't want more challenging stimuli in their lives will also reflect that in their music choices, maybe picking something that doesn't need that much attention like pop music or classic country. Mm -hmm. However, uh, personality, age, gender, geographic location, these all play a part. It's not a black and white picture. And kids who talked to trees when they were younger listen to river dance. Is that what you did? Maybe. <laughs> you don't even want to know how excited I was when Pocahontas came out and Grandmother Willow started talking. I was like, trees do talk back. I'm vindicated. Oh, man. But yeah, they, they didn't ever talk back to me. But yeah, I was a big believer in like the whole nature and spirits and fairies and leprechauns and this is real and, and river dance. And my mom would be like, are you listening to the, like Lord of the Dance, River Dance? Spirit? I mean, I think it'll like, take you to a place mentally. Tap dancing in my room with where even though I be. can't dance. <laughs> it's your version of listening to My Chemical Romance. <laughs> I mean, River Dance, My Chemical Romance, it they're rhymes. the same thing. No, it's just different things oh. appealing to different people and what they need in especially that adolescent time of life and also the anticipation and dopamine, sex, blah, blah, blah. I needed magic, you needed not magic. sex. <laughs> and that reflects in your life now, which yeah. is heavily magic focused. Well, uh, what I like to see with music now, whenever I hear songs on the radio that I that are overplayed over and over and over and I don't particularly like, mm -hmm. uh, I will take the song and parody it and make it about something I do like. So now- You know what? You yeah. have the power. Huh? You have the power to shape your world. It's true, yeah. In so terms Taylor of Swift, shake it off. Songs. It's about Gandalf now, take that. Yeah. Miss Swift. <laughs> I'm not hip, I'm just gonna sit here. Well, listen to Bonnie's version of Shake It Off, focused mm -hmm. on Gandalf. Audience, <laughs> does music affect you emotionally in any way? Is there a certain song or part of a song that makes you really happy or makes you want to cry? Let us know what that is below. Free bird. Free bird. And please <laughs> like and subscribe for more. <laughs>